the process really begins uh, with getting the old exhibit out, uh, which in this case uh, took, I think, about three days or so. But once we got the, the ball rolling, uh, the, in, the, the prep work is really just about you know, erasing all evidence of the old exhibit. Uh, in this case, it was some wall patching, uh, typical kind of stuff like that. Uh, repainting wasn't too bad, but I did end up repainting nearly the entire thing. Uh, the other big process uh, in this space was uh, the previous exhibit used a specific light uh, for the entire exhibit. So everything that was used for lighting in there was at a 6,000 Kelvin color temperature, which is not what we want for textiles, not really what we want for much art in general. Uh, so relighting the entire gallery was a, a process that had to get done as well. So installing a textile show uh, in comparison to something that's more, you know, painting driven or, or sculpture driven. Uh, the textiles always present a challenge because there's nothing that we can level off of. Uh, so I think in the, a lot of the videos, you'll see me using a, a level just to get to a starting point. Uh, but there's never a, a time that we can actually uh, hold a level up to the piece or anything like that. And the other challenge that I, I always see is uh, typically when we're laying out uh, a painting show or, or a sculpture show, you can very easily lean the paintings on, on blocks against the walls uh, and put sculptures in place and, and move them around. Uh, it's a lot harder to do that with textiles. Uh, we, unless we've got a staff that, you know, we can have multiple people holding up multiple uh, works. Uh, and I think we, we kind of compensate for that by loading the, the gallery full of tables so that every textile can be uh, rolled out kind of in place or in place as best as we can. And that really does help start to visualize where things are gonna go. Uh, helps being able to get an accurate measurement on everything. But again, so much of laying out the textile show tends to be kind of, you know, trusting your eyes or the eyes of everybody helping you uh, to get things level as well as you can. Uh, we talk a lot about uh, leveling off of the central design component to the textile, and that tends to be the best thing that we can do. Uh, but I always joke, like, don't look too closely or don't bring a, a tape measure to check the distances between everything because everything varies uh, just a bit. So we now sew a sleeve onto the back of the textile and with that sleeve then we end up using a typically an aluminum bar that can slide through that sleeve and then screw that directly to the wall. Uh, this provides a, a manner of security for the piece because you can't simply just pull it away from the, the wall. And then one last little detail that we typically do uh, here is some Velcro tabs. And the tabs are at the bottom corners typically. Sometimes a, a top corner needs one. Uh, and that is just to kind of, you know, not necessarily pull the textile flat, but help it lay flat and stay flat. One of the things that I find most interesting about uh, working with a textile show is Unlike you know a group painting show or a group uh, sculpture show or something that's kind of mixed between the two, uh, you might have several artists in those shows that sure they're working in the same medium, but they're not necessarily working in the same tradition. Uh, you know, if it's paint on a canvas, they can all, all call them paintings, but you know, working with acrylic or oil or encaustic or collage are wildly different uh, methods and processes. Uh, with the textiles, uh, there is a, a cultural tradition and it's, it just has a different kind of sensibility about it. Uh, in a lot of cases, you know, the person that's making the textile 
is probably not the only person in their family that's done this. Uh, I think in, in other realms, it's like you you have families and somebody decides to be a painter, or maybe there's a, a tradition of painting in the, in the family or sculpture in the family, but it tends not to be the case in my experience. Uh, so I think that there is a, uh, a bit more of a lineage that works between uh, between the textiles from artist to artist and, and much more of a kind of tradition that they're all working within. So often uh, when I'm working, hanging a show, I'm not necessarily looking at the pieces. Uh, in a lot of cases, I'm kind of looking at the rhythm of the shapes from one to another. There were a couple uh, standouts. Uh, Aurelia Joe piece with the uh, the two figures in the starry sky. That one I remember when when I unrolled it, it just kind of brought a smile to my face, uh, just because it, it was this, you know, almost alien like asteroids video game uh, scenario, and it just looked uh, very charming, and and I kind of enjoyed that one. Uh, what do I look forward to the most during an install? Uh, it honestly, it's the finish. The the like today or yesterday when I left the museum and there wasn't anything left to do in that install. And it sounds uh, I don't know if it sounds a, a little negative to say I look forward to the end, but it's such an all-consuming uh, experience typically. Uh, I dream about it. It's what keeps me up at night. Uh, it's a it's a constant uh, thought process, and a, a lot of that is my own my own drive to always make something better, because I think we can always improve with every install. Uh, but it's also you know it kind of part of my job title when you. Uh, you know, when you analyze preparator, is to be prepared, and it's preparing every uh, little scenario and being prepared for any uh, variation in, in what might happen. Uh, so there is a incredible relief that happens uh, when I can turn around and everything's done. And last night I did that, and honestly, I I slept really well. I got home and I was just thought, well, there's there's almost nothing to think about. So uh, that feeling usually lasts about 12 hours and then I get involved in the next exhibit.